Hello everyone, it's Riel Harris, Cup of Tea. Today I am joined by five amazing actors and I'm so excited oh. today. <laughs> today we have the Actors Roundtable. Uh, Olivia Hespi, uh, Laura Lake, Molly D, Frankie Assi. Is that it, Assi? Just fr Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah, no, no, Frank, Frank, Sarah, Sarah Merrifield. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate this. We're going to have a great time today. It's going to be so much fun. I've got some great questions for you guys. And uh, yeah, I just, want to say, I just want to say I appreciate you guys coming on very much. Um, and yeah, just before we get into it, I just want to give you guys just a couple of um, seconds each to just introduce yourself, you know, um, just um, a little bit about your backgrounds. Um, Olivia, should we start with you? Yeah. Uh, so I'm Olivia. Um, I started acting when I was... I was quite young actually and uh, decided I um, you know right from when I was very very much younger that I actually really really enjoyed it um, and I started doing classes um, at a youth theatre and then after that I started doing stuff at my secondary school and um, and did, did GCSE and then thought actually I want to go to co college and actually study this because I, I really really loved it so I I spent two years with um, two amazing tutors who are still working in the industry now, uh, who taught me uh, amazing, amazing things. And, um, and then I went off to Arts Ed Drama School and uh, studied there for, um, for just a year. Uh, but it was ever so much fun. And now I sort of, I think that sort of actually made me feel like I want to go out into the, the real world and actually do my own thing I sort of wanted to be a free bird after that because I, I, I don't know about anyone else here but I hate education really I'm not really an education person so I, was like, I just kind of want to do it myself do you know what I mean I'm more of like a, a free a free bird I want to be a free do you know what I mean I know exactly so, what you yeah mean. Mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. I just wanted to do it myself really that is exactly great. thank you for that <laughs> thank you for that uh, <laughs> I hate education <laughs> um, a solid <laughs> opening a solid opening <laughs> Thank you for that, Olivia. Laura, Miss Laura Lake, please. Hi. Let's hear a little bit about you. So, um, much like Olivia, I uh, have a bit of a background in it. And then I went to the Erdang Academy. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo yeah. And then after then, I went on to cruise ships and I wanted to be a backing dancer. And then I came back to the UK and I found the world of acting and stunts. And that's me. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Acting and stunts, that's incredible. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Frankenstein. That's cool. <laughs> you know, it's just Frank is fine. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, Frankie. Frankie. <laughs> Um, so for me, um, I started acting quite late relative to anyone else. Um, I was in uni first and I was studying media and television. Um, from there we had projects to do. So one of the projects was put together a short film. And I really enjoyed um, like directing, writing and acting in that short film. And I thought, you know what, this might be something I want to pursue. So once I finished university, I um, <clears throat> literally first year of after finishing uni, I decided to go for an agent. Luckily, I was very lucky I got signed early on. And ever since, oh, thank you. Ever since then, <laughs> um, yeah, I've done acting on TV. I've done some film work. I've done some theater stuff and um, the small training that I did have was at the Hammersmith Lyric Theatre so that's who I'm going to credit for my training or lack thereof. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for that Frankie. Uh, Sarah, quick and Hi. Um, so I went to uni in Coventry to study. Ooh. I didn't go down the, um, the drama school route I was just a bit too Ooh. rebellious. I was just like, oh, yeah, he's paying all that fancy money. And um, <laughs> then after, <laughs> after that, I, I went to California and I lived there for like two years in which oh, I started wow. production, actually, although my degree was in theatre. Amazing. Um, I went out there to bum originally after uni, but then I thought, oh, let me do something with my life. And I started doing production on an American series out there. And then I came back and I didn't know what to do. And my mom was like, are you going to do anything with the degree that I paid for? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so um, since then, I, you know, like most actress, actors, 
you know the studying looking for where your home is in terms of training so I found fourth monkey um really like beautiful to train at um and I've had like some good tutors and guides along uh, guides along the way um so I found myself really lucky in terms of a couple tv roles and you know I was I've never really had to search for an agent and I'm I don't know how I've done this but um I've always managed to find a good one so commercially speaking and my agent now is pretty dope so yeah amazing man very successful yeah I like that yeah <laughs> uh, <funny. laughs> Hello. Um, Hello. So yeah, so I, I started my kind of acting journey when I was little. I went to stage school, did all of that. Then when I went to secondary school, kind of fell out of love with it, you know, was trying to keep with the cool kids, whatever. So um, mm-hmm. I actually spent four years studying. So this was like GCSE, A-level, et cetera, et cetera, doing filmmaking. So that's what I was doing, kind of the background. Then when I finished, I was like, Mm-mm, I'm meant to be in front of the camera. <laughs> so then I went and trained for two years at somewhere called JP Academy. It's somewhere in High Wycombe, which is where I'm from. And yes, yeah, so that was like acting, dancing, singing, all of that sort of stuff, which was amazing. I was studying like Stanislavski, Meisner, et cetera, et cetera. And then I, I'm a free bird as well. I decided to move to London. Um, I got my first job working at the Mercer Bar and then did some like short films, et cetera, et cetera. I found the company Cinebooth, which I think is where we met as well. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, I'm doing like hosting, presenting for them. And then I kind of took a break last year because my mental health just got really bad. So I kind of just needed to like, oh, Oh, am I back? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just needed to kind of like recenter, refocus because I was like, I'm kind of trudging along at the moment. I need to take a break and just, and then yes, yeah, so I started doing like more like commercials, modeling, etc. And then February of this year, it was like now is the time, and then COVID hit. <laughs> um, but I started going to, I started going to classes at Actors Door Studio because they um they practice Meisner, which is my favorite practitioner because it's um living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. So that's the way I like to do it. And then since lockdown, um, I've just been, you know, like auditioning, etc. And I've just been accepted to a theatre company, which is very exciting. So hey, congratulations. Kind of, yeah, yeah, thank you. That's so amazing. I'm doing, bless you, thank you. So I'm working with them as well as also pursuing a career in film. So yeah, it's all going that's amazing. quite exciting. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you all so much. That is great. That's great intros. Um, so actually, Molly, let's start with you then. Um, so, uh, you know, when it comes to acting, you know, there's obviously a variety of emotions that an actor will go through in the process of their, of their specific process. Um, so, you know, my first question to you is really, do you think it's an actor's job to feel something or do you think it's an actor's job to portray that something is being felt? That's very interesting. I think each actor and each role requires its own, what's it called? Its own preparation, I think. For me personally, how I like to do it, because at the end of the day, as much as it's very much like, you should feel something, da da da. If if you manage to get the job done without feeling anything, then I mean, fair play to you. (laughs) But for me, like I said, it's like living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. So if I'm in a scene and I don't know, we're having an argument, my, my goal in the scene, my objective is I need to take that drink of water and your goal in the scene is to not let me have that water and we're kind of arguing over it. I'm going to get angry in that scene, you know, and I'm going to feel it. But then as soon as I stop doing that scene, I should be able to take myself away from it. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. You get what I mean? <laughs> in the moment, in the moment, I feel like I need to feel it and I do feel it. If I'm, you yeah. know, if I'm acting out this scene, of course I'm going to feel it. So, um, yeah, that's me. Ah, so your specific process is, is more along the lines of like, I want to feel it, every single emotion. I want to hit every single, every single criteria. Well, it's just, tr- it's just truthful. I mean, I'm yet to be on a job where someone says to me, I, I think it depends what kind of job you're on, because there might be a job where they just say, just cry. It doesn't matter what the lead up is, just cry, you know? But for me, I've anything I've ever it. done... Yeah, anything I've ever done, it's very much, you know, if it gets to a point where it naturally happens and I am meant to cry, then of course it happens. But again, I guess that's when you work with your director and everything because, you you know, you should kind of see how the scene goes. But I guess if you, 
how can I word it? If it's a good script, you've got good direction and of course a good actor, you're gonna, yeah, I don't know if I've just answered your question, but yeah, basically you <laughs> no, should, I, think you have. I feel like I, I feel like naturally you are going to feel it. If you're truly committed and you're truly in that scene yeah. and you're truly living this character's truth, you, sh you would feel it, in my opinion. Beautiful answer, beautiful answer. Thank you for that, Molly. Great, great opening, I like that. <laughs> um, very nice answer, thank you. Uh, Frankie, I want to come to you now and I want to talk a little bit about, you know, um, scene partners and performing with someone else. Um, how, much of, how, mu how much of an actor's performance do you think is aided by, um, I guess, uh, a, 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 a good performance by the scene partner in terms of the scene partner being completely in character, you two having good chemistry? How much do you think the performance is aided um, from an actor by their scene partner? Do you think having, uh, if you've got a scene partner that's having a, a bad day, maybe, do you think that should necessarily affect your own performance as an actor? Or can you just be in your own world and it doesn't matter what they're doing, you can always bring that? Um, I'd say for me, um, the way I see it is that I think as actors, we sometimes we try, we tend to get in our own heads a little bit. And we forget that filmmaking is a collaborative process, especially when talking about film and all short films or whatever. Um, a partner who knows what he's doing is as essential in any workplace as it is here, you know. So, yeah, I can say, I can come and say and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm having the best day. I'm, I'm really feeling all the emotions today. I'm going to hit this accent amazingly. This is going to be great. This is going to be that. But the same way that if I can come and say I'm having a great day and say, for example, the director's having a bad day, it doesn't matter how good my scene is, when the audience sees it, because the audience that really matters in this situation, when the audience sees it, they're going to see that there is something wrong. Like it's not, even as actors giving it is all, the scene doesn't hit like it really should. And I think that's, that goes the same for a, a, you know, a, a scene partner. If I'm acting opposite someone else and we've got a really intense emotional scene and they're not giving it their all for whatever reason, the scene just doesn't work. Because then there's a power shift, because then it looks like one's overcompensating for the other's quote unquote lackluster performance, you know? And, and we can't all be perfect 100% of the time. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and that's where we've got to be kind of understanding about the whole process. Like, we, if we work on this all together, it'll come together like it's supposed to be. If one of them is, if one of us is not carrying its weight, then the whole production kind of sinks. And I've been in productions where a particular person has not carried their weight. And that could be anyone. It could be an actor, an actress, it could be a, a crew member. It really sinks the whole production. So I think it's, it's paramount, honestly. How much of, that's a great answer, by the way. Um, how much of acting is reacting, Frankie? You know the old saying, acting. You know how how much of it do you think? To what extent would you say that rings true for you? I I would say for my early years, it was definitely very true. Like I I remember I remember my early years. I'd go to like auditions and stuff like that, and then I would literally just be just just reacting to whatever they were saying, like in every sense of the word. But it's like I wasn't really acting, and I think that's what kind of held me back at the very beginning. Um. It, it's it's like I heard an actor say, I forgot which actor said this, but one actor said one time, you know, when you're in a scene of another actor, you need to make sure that you're not just reacting to what they're saying, you're not reacting to their lines. Of course, you've got to follow that cue, but you're also having a conversation. I think this goes back to, to Molly's point, which is living truthfully. Like, we are literally having a conversation. It's got to feel like a conversation for me, because if I'm just reacting, my lines are going to come out stiff, they're going to come out a bit robotic, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Somebody else yeah, yeah. said Sorry. to me, acting is responding, not act, not acting is reacting, but acting is responding. Mm. That was, and I think that's a good yeah, thing, yeah. So that's, yes, yes. That absolutely. was something quite interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you for that, Frankie. Sorry, I cut it. No. <laughs> well, that's great. That's that's fine. I was one in. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do, so I was going all over the place, so I just need someone else to jump in, I'm like, <laughs> someone save me. Oh, guys. <laughs> so uh, um, Laura, I'll come to you now, if that's all right. Um, yeah. You know, as an actor, I'm sure you've, made, read, you've read many scripts, comedies and horrors and dramas and everything. You've probably seen quite a lot, actually. And I'm wondering now, 
talking about um, the preparation of getting into character and entering a character and, and, and really starting those early processes of you know when you first read a script and you start to make your notes on the side and mm -hmm. you know you start to you know, formulate you know the notes the highlighter and <laughs> oh my god yes yes <laughs> it's, like a whole nother, it's like a whole nother script within a script it's like inception um yeah it really is <laughs> you know I'm, 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 you know i'm wondering and this is kind of like a, a nuanced thing but how how much does the theme or tone of a film influence your preparation for the character you know for example if you've got like a small role in a horror film or something because it's a horror does that influence your preparation do you think well i need to add in dark elements or i need to or is it no you stick to what's in to, to your character what, how, where do you stand on that for me um i always try and go well by what the director wants because sometimes i'm you know, I've been lucky enough in, a, in these circumstances to have like chats with them beforehand where they say, oh, okay, so your character is timid or your character is a bit ditzy or she's actually she's the female hotel, she's this, that and the other. So then I can kind of get a bit more of a gauge, but I try to ignore the theme as much as possible as I have known other actors could to go down this path, especially, you know, with things like horror, that, you know, they go on set and, you know, they're like, <laughs> everything for like no reason and it's like oh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh what's going on <laughs> yeah it suddenly turns into like scooby-doo and it's like no <laughs> not quite um <laughs> so so yeah i say, um i try to focus more on the character rather than the theme because i do think that that can otherwise influence you a bit too much like mm -hmm. i've had these amazing script just come through I can't say too much about it, but I can say that it's um, heavily action and like superheroes and stuff. But I'm trying not to go down the whole typical like, I'm here to <laughs> <the day." laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Get, your, get your cape out and just start <laughs> whisking through. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have no idea. <laughs> That's amazing. And congratulations with that as well. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, well great answer. Yeah, Thank you for that. Um, Sarah, I want to um, come to you now and I want to talk a little bit about sort of introduce a sort of more human element. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes we, where, where have we gone? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Keep I'm switching, here, here. switching here. positions. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the more human element to acting, you know, um, acting is really a world of its own and it, it, there is a zone you need to get into to really enter this realm of acting, isn't there? Um, but, you know, I'm actually wondering, you know, how much of what you're, how you're feeling on that specific day that you go to set and you need to do a, a, maybe it's a big scene or whatever it is, you know, how much of what you're feeling on that day, just in your personal life, whatever you take to set, how much of that should or should be put into a performance, you know? Like, for example, if, you, if you're really angry one day and you wake up angry, you've got something happen at home, you go, to, <laughs> you go to set and there's an angry scene you have to do where you're shouting and screaming and kicking things over, do you, are you, is it a matter of drowning out that personal life element or is it like using that for the performance? Because then you might hit a bit of a paradox where you're using it, but it's yourself, it's not the character. So where do you stand on that? Um, I would say that, again, this is a situation that depends on a, the individual actor's process. I found that sometimes uh, for me, um, like Molly being quite Meisner based that, um, those personal elements kind of give detail to an undeveloped character and can sometimes give great detail um, and that comes from personal life experience. I do believe that the palette of an, an actor in terms of their horizon and how much they can choose in regards to how they colour their palette comes from their own personal experiences. 100%. Um, which is why, although I'm like completely like, I love Meisner because it keeps, for me, my, my personal mental mind safe because after, I'm yeah, I'm truthfully pretending to be, like um, Molly said, um, sometimes people like Stanislavski who use like memories as long as they're old enough to be safe they kind of like filter through to give you like a genuine human person you know what is it like to remember drinking a hot coffee and all that that jargon and stuff but I do believe that 
it depends on the process. There's been times where I've been absolutely furious on my days going into an audition where I have to be completely calm. <laughs> and, um, oh, painful, oh, painful. <laughs> especially if you've got like a, you know, you've got your own personal life. People would just believe that actors just, you know, we just act. We yeah. don't have to do washing and, you know, look after partners yeah. and family members and stuff and a lot of those things kind of like wear down on us you know in between all the auditions in between all the self tapes and you know the frustrations of getting to spotlight on time and whatever else it, there's a lot that comes with it and I think that when it comes to making a genuine human being for the stage tv or film if you don't add those qualities then are they really human so sometimes I feel like, yeah, it's, it's cool to, I think each actor kind of knows what to leave at the door. You know, you're selective about what it is that actually filters through for the character. And if you get it wrong, you're just like, well, I should have learned. Do you know what I mean? To leave it at the door. This audition didn't go well. And we've all had those auditions where it's like, oh my God, never, oh ever do oh. that. <laughs> but then times where I've picked and I've been like I'm so mad at him right now but it's completely fueled like a, a nervous tension in a piece that has worked and I've booked the job and I'm like I, I need you to argue with me again so when I go yeah. do the job you know but um, it completely all depends on it I, I, I'd say stay true to for an act, I'd always say, regardless of whatever you choose, whatever process you choose, stay true to making sure that what is displayed is a genuine human being, even in their eccentricities. Do you know what I mean? Like, show mm. a, a real human. Mm. That's our job. Yeah. We have to show real human beings. So, however you get there, get there. You know? <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. That is a great answer. Well, listen, let me tell you a lot of have, talking about having those, you know, traumatic um, auditions. My first audition that I ever did was like, if anyone feels bad about their auditions, let me just say this now, because this was my first audition ever for a short film. I went in there. I had no idea like what I was doing. There was a chair, so I just sat in the chair. I shouldn't even have sat down. I sat down and I literally had a page and I was just reading like that and looking up <laughs> periodically. And even though I was reading off the paper, I still messed up the lines. <laughs> I, was so, I was so nervous because I was trying to like look up at the same time, then I'd look up and forget the lines and look back down. And there was like, it was like a huge audition. I don't know how I got this for like my first thing. But um, there was like four of them and they were all just looking at me and it was like a look of pity <laughs> other than like, <laughs> so like Help him. Yeah, Help. Someone, needs to, someone needs to pick this guy up, man. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Call him an Uber. Um, yeah. It's always yeah, the first was, audition, um, isn't it? It's always oh, the first, always the first first audition. audition. Always. So, it's so, yeah, you just, just panic. But, forget yeah. it, forget it. <laughs> um, Olivia, let me come to you now. Thank you for that lovely answer as well, Sarah. That was great. That was great. Um, Olivia, let me ask you, um, you know, a lot of people have different approaches to when it comes to, you know, understanding their characters and reading for um, a certain character. And they, they obviously so many characters are going to be so many so different in all the emotions that you need to feel and the essences that you need to include. And um, I'm wondering, um, to what extent knowing the background of the character um, is it, to what level of value you hold that to in terms of knowing the background of the character that may not be directly linked to the scenes you're in or to the script itself, you know, I'm talking about their birthday or what happened at a specific moment in their life that is not in the script, you know, how far, because I've heard a lot of actors and actresses like to know all the essences of their characters that are not directly linked to the script, you know. Um, but then there's also actors and actresses that like to that just literally just want to know everything about the script in, in as much detail as possible. And they're not too concerned with all the outside elements of what made them who they are today from an external point of view that isn't directly linked to the script, you know. Um, so I'm wondering what where you stand on that. Are you someone that really just sticks to the script and you have to know that inside out? Or do you go beyond that and you want to know all these other essences about their past life and you know what's gonna happen after the end and stuff, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, I have to say, I, I am I am one of those people where I, I do like to sort of um, look further into it because, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's just, when I just read a script, I, I don't feel like I could just kind of do it just like do you know what i mean on the on the page i have to really look into that person because i feel like it really does show especially on on screen because people see things in your eyes and it's all about the eyes and you know you've got to think as well and people people can almost see you thinking um mm. it's final i think it's not as it's not as bad on stage um because you know it's, it's more about your body on stage but on film it's so tightly you know it's everything is so close close to you and mm -hmm. so everything you're doing will be able to be seen um so i think it's it's really important uh to to look at all the the backstory and you know and and um do do your research um if, you know on the character before uh just because it, it would definitely definitely be seen on camera um in my experience i mean i've gone in i've gone into like some products before and and not done any research at all and sort of thought well and then you look at yourself back on camera and you go i can actually see it in my eyes that i don't know <laughs> i don't know any i don't know enough about this character because i'm not yeah it's, it's weird but you can actually see it so i yeah i think it's it's very very important yeah yeah i uh, i i i completely agree with you especially that last point i think that's so so important you can yeah. see it. It's in the eyes. It's in the movement. It's in the small little facial expressions that there is a history here because you're mm. creating a character that actually has been through a whole life and you're just portraying them at a specific point in their life, you know? Mm. So you need yeah. to know all that stuff because essentially you've lived it, you know? Yes. So it's yeah, really, exactly. it's really yeah. interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I think very, yeah, very. Literally what so you said is like, you look at yourself sometimes and you think I didn't have it. I didn't yeah. have it, you know? You know like, yeah. And then there's a, there's a big difference when you say, well, oh, I did have it, you know? So yeah, mm. absolutely. I think that's very, yeah. very, a really nice point you make there. Um, yeah, so, all right, let, let me go to you, Molly. Um, same question to you, Molly. Um, uh, background of the character, where do you stand on that? Are you someone that likes to Are know? You? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, no, go for it. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion, again, like for me personally, again, if someone can, give a stellar performance without doing it again you know props to them but mm -hmm. for me again it's truth right how can I live someone's truth if I don't know that person so mm -hmm. it's funny that you specifically said birthday I'm like have I given someone a birthday before I'm not 100% sure but 100% like what have they done that day why are they there what do they want when they're there what is this other person to them um and yeah definitely and also because you know you know how you were saying about um with Stanislavski, it's kind of like thinking back using your own memories. Um, so yeah, I don't agree with that because for me, and also Meisner, again, if you read his book, he literally says doing that method, it actually isn't being truthful to that character because you're taking yourself away from that character and applying your truth, but also each person, of course, how you're going to portray a character is different. So yeah, but anyway, um, in preparing for a character i think yeah definitely you have to do your research 100 percent. you need to know how your character is going to react in different situations you know because you never know if the other person they might um improvise a certain line that gets kept in the film and you need to know how to answer that so 100 percent, yeah you do need to do your research well me anyway so, so yes <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well no so i don't want to be like this is what you have to do because i think we all have our own process and like i said i think each different character as well requires its own process so um yeah but for me definitely yeah definitely research research you just need to like i don't really see how you can truthfully play this person if you don't know all these details about the person because mm -hmm. you know everything about yourself right so very good point completely agree absolutely yeah. that's a very <laughs> good point uh, all right i'm watching the time here seven minutes okay um frankie let me come on to you now i don't know if i we'll have time to get through mm. this um but i think we should be able to and then it'll probably cut off um but yeah i want to talk obviously we both um we all know and i actually alluded to um i did a director's round table this is the last round table i did and if this mm. is this question is basically an essence of what i what i did in what i well, a question I asked on on that roundtable. It's really about the relationship between an actor and a director. I mean, we both know that it's a, a monumental, valuable, important relationship, and you guys right. you bounce off each other essentially, right? Um, 
So, and on the last, uh, on the director Zoom call, I was talking about, I, was, I asked one of the, the directors what sort of processes and what, what elements do they put in place to ensure this, they, 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 that they can get the best performance out of their actors, basically. And mm -hmm. I don't want to neglect that actors can bring certain things to the table that can also bring out the best performance of their director. And I have my own opinion on that, but I'll ask you, you know, what, what kind of elements do you think an actor needs to have or qualities an actor needs to bring to set or bring in his preparation to bring the best out of his director to, to ensure that healthy, dynamic, collaborative relationship? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, the thing is, this actually kind of goes back to the idea of researching character, because we are actors. It is our job to research these characters. Like, you don't have to do this, but it helps when you're prepared. It helps when you come on set and you're not asking the director every time, oh, wait, my character says this, but how would he say it? No, you should be able to bring yourself in that. I think he would say it like this, because sometimes even the director writes, you know, or the writer or whatever, they write this, they don't always have an idea of how things will be said specifically, because it may not be a character-driven story. It, do you know, it could be a lot of different things. So you coming in prepared, you know, like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You know, this is what is always said. And I think this is very true for us. Like if we really give our all, if we work as hard as we need to, I'm a tool for the director to use. He will use me the best way he knows how. I can't work without him. And then that being said, you know, I've done a short film in 2018 where the director, it, I was the main character. He was all the way focused on me. When I say all the way, I mean like literally after every scene, he'll come to me and say, listen, because it was a very personal story to him. It was about him and his relationship with his grandma when he passed away. And he never got to make amends with her before she passed away. And I was kind of portraying that in the short film. And after every scene, like, listen, how are you feeling? How did that feel to you? And I was like, well, I didn't always have the answer. Because sometimes I'll just do it. And you were like, no, but how did it feel to you? I'm like, that. Yeah, I guess it felt good. I don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And it was really like hammered down on me because it was a personal story to him. And I was his tool to be used, so to speak, to tell the story, you know? And so it was a very character-driven story, but it's not, not every production is going to be like that. Others just want you to come in, do your line, and that's it. Because you, you are serving the story, but it's not about you or your performance. It, it really depends on the director's point of view. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I don't work for the director. I work with the director, mm. but I didn't, they, it is their vision ultimately. And I need to see the bigger picture. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So I, I don't even know if I really answered that question, but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you did. I don't think you did. <laughs> no, I think you did. Um, I think you did. Um, Molly, you're going to have to go, right? Um, so I'll quickly ask you the same question, just because I know you have to go. What elements do you think an actor needs to bring to bring the best, to get the best out, best performance out of, his, uh, out of the director? Um, In four minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, sorry, please can you repeat that? <laughs> what element what does the act what element does the actor need to bring to get what, the best yeah, what, what the director? Sort of, what sort of qualities does the actor need to bring in his preparation and his performance and his communication with the director to bring the best performance out of the director to ensure a healthy collaborative relationship? Uh, be prepared a hundred percent. If you're turning up being like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, then that's not that's straight up. You're not going to get a very good result. Oh, uh, what's the line? What's the probably, line? <laughs> turn that, yeah, exactly. And they're probably learn your lines. Oh my goodness, if you don't know your lines, geez, Louise. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, definitely have all the preparation. Turn up. It's work at the end of the day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, my phone just went. Um. <laughs> Like at the end, like it's work at the end of the day, you know, like it's all well and yeah. good. Like someone just said, you know, um, talent, working hard, et cetera, et cetera. Like it is, if you're there, it's a pays job. You better do your work basically. And, uh, you know, 99% of the acting is the homework. It's the preparation. What you're seeing on screen is the tip of the iceberg. It's your job to make sure that whole iceberg has been built beforehand. And that's how you get those good performances. So yeah, I just say be prepared. 
you know, do your homework. Of course, if you have any questions about the character, that should all be, you know, there should be open communication before your first day on set, right? Um, and also, you know, if you've gone through the rounds of auditions, I'm sure you would have been developing your character together anyway. Um, but yeah, no, just making sure you're prepared. That's literally your only job, really, is just to make sure you're sorted. So I'd say do that. Oh, perfect. That's lovely. Thank oh, you. Oh, and also, of course, when with the relationship with the director, of course, you know, be respectful, take direction well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and, you know, bring a good attitude, bring positive. Yeah, be good. Mm. <laughs> Molly D, be good. Yeah. <laughs> be good, guys. That's it. Um, that's, that's what it is. You didn't have to go through all that, Frankie. You just had to say, be good. I like that. <laughs> I don't know why. I did, I did the most. I don't know why. Yeah, be good. Good. No, you did everything. Yeah. everything you, done. you did everything. So, um, Miss Laura, I want to come back to you. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about um, this. I've got, you know, I've had very clear distinctions because I'm an actor as well. I don't know if any of you know that. <laughs> but um, I, saw your, I saw your short film and it was brilliant. Oh, you're very sweet. Thank it was you. very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Um, so, yeah, um, I've had very clear distinctions in my previous acting work when it comes to the feeling of being in and out of character. You know, I think we talked about it a little bit as well, Olivia, in terms of like, sometimes you can see it on screen and not really in character, but I want to mm. talk to you a little bit about feeling, you know, like the feeling of being in and, in and out of character, you know, what you actually experience in your soul. Because so, there's, a, there's a slight soulful no, was, that, like, that goes beyond, I don't know, like beyond the consciousness, you know, it's kind of like a, there's a subconscious nature to acting. And, um, you know, for me, I've had a clear distinction of being in and out of character. I'm, I'm wondering, do you, do, do you, do you, is it easy for you to identify when you're in and when you're out of character? Yes. For mm. me, personally, everyone's processes are different and are beautiful and fabulous in their own ways. But for me, personally, like, I love losing myself in a character. I love building a character and going, right, who is she? Okay, her name's Natalie. She is a Taurus. She likes X, Y, Z. I, I like to go into meticulous detail. And with that, then I lose myself in it. And I use a tool which has really helped me. It's called NLP. Mm -hmm. Oh, Programming. I know NLP. Yeah. Ah, okay, cool. <laughs> um, and I found it, for me with acting, I found it's an absolute godsend. Because with it, it has given me the tools to access different parts of my personality, which I didn't even know were there. You know, because I can look at it and go, okay, I need to feel more motivated. And then with that, I anchor that to so for the NLP you do something called anchoring and if you want to feel a certain emotion you it's almost like you meditate and you kind of get yourself in the zone and then with it you set an anchor so say like that could be an anchor mm. like that could be an anchor then suddenly you know you can kind of develop that onto the characters and with that I found that really useful and that's helped me kind of lose myself with the roles but then again everyone else's methods are perfectly wonderful and valid but yeah that's the way that I've managed to found that I managed to bring the most truth that's amazing does something happen psychologically when you're in character if we remove the physical for a second is there somewhere in is there like a psychological aspect you can identify as well I I'd say yes like normally I can feel like certain characters that I play like a little while ago I had to play this almost slightly neurotic and psychotic <laughs> character and there was definitely a shift like she was she was fun she was a bit crazy but there was definitely a shift that ever place i had to go to which i wouldn't normally ever go to ever and i wouldn't recommend people ever go unless you really have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the whole thing <laughs> that's the whole thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, really um that's a really um that's a really good answer thank you for that laura honestly that's a great answer um glad it helped <laughs> um Swiveling back to um, the elements that an actor needs to bring, I want to um, I want to have a little bit of input here as well for anyone that's watching that might um, resonate with this. I think the um, what some of the qualities that an actor can bring to really help bring the best out of their director. I think I think some of that can come down to knowing, like let's say you're feeling something, right? Whether you're portraying it or you're actually feeling it. I feel like what could really help bring the best out of the director is being able to identify where certain feelings are coming from. 
You know, is that coming from something in your past? Is that something com coming from something in the character's past? Is it something that you spoke about in the pre-planning? And you can say, oh, well, you said this. So that emotion that I just felt that you're not liking right now, it came from that. Because then the director can say, oh, I see. And then he can actually look at the scale of what you guys have been doing and say, okay, you're here right now and I need you to get here. But if you kind of show up and you're sort of like, oh, I don't know where that came from or I just kind of did it. Uh, yeah. And then he doesn't, oh, where have you gone? Oh, there you go. Uh, and then he can't really, then he or she can't really measure what it is you're doing because you don't have an answer for that. I think Molly's had to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> bye, Molly. You'll see it on here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's one of the best things you could do, you know, be able to at least identify where certain things are coming from. And I think that comes with an element of professionalism in really channeling certain emotions that, you're, that, that, that you can identify and you can say, this is where it came from, this is what it is, to help build that, that a, 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 a relationship that's built on communication, honesty, authenticity yeah. and communication, you know, because if you can communicate something to your director, whether it's right or wrong doesn't matter. He or she will then be able to look at that and say, okay, you're here, now I need you to be here, you know? So I think that's one of the things that could really, um, that could really benefit. Um, Sarah, I'm gonna come to you now. Um, um, I wanna talk a little bit about the old saying of, as long as my character, as long as I know the motivations of my character, then I'll be fine, you know? That's, we've heard that. <laughs> we've heard that everywhere you go as an actor, you know? As long as I know the motivations, then I'm good to go, you know? Um, actually, I'm wondering, you know, to what level, do you, to what value do you hold that statement? Is that something that resonates highly with you as long as you know the motivations? Is the motivations on the top of the pyramid for you when it comes to understanding why your character does what 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 she does or, or absolutely i mean like obviously everyone like in life you have your own motivation even if it's you want to, you want to be like a a bloody actor do you know what i mean why do you know what i mean a lot of the time they say you know actors haven't been loved as children and they just want the attention and there's a lot of like there's a, you know, there's a lot of like psychological like jargon about why yeah. we become actors um and i suppose that you know even if you're not an actor everybody has the reason for getting up in the morning and doing whatever they have to do or you know whether it's a wife trying to steal somebody's husband or whatever it is everybody <laughs> has their own motivation okay Gritty or not, okay, that's the real, that's the realness of it. And however you, whatever it is that you are trying to obtain from life is how you kind of like move yourself around it. Whatever coping mechanism you use to get around that, you do. So I do genuinely believe that there is a very heavy importance in regards to what it is that you want. Your motivation in life is the reason you move in certain ways. However. When it comes to this, you know, uh, drama school situation where it's like, oh, what is the objective? You know, it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, I know it. But I know that I know it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and sometimes your objective and your motivations change from scene to scene, from era to era in your life. When you were 10, you don't want the same things as when you were 20, as when you were 30. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and you have to kind of treat a, a script, whether it's 10 pages, two pages or 2,000 pages, like a, like a lifespan, accordingly, the same. And sometimes, you know, from scene to scene, you know, overall, you're going to want to be loved or, you know what I mean, whatever you want to be in terms of your acceptance of love, whatever. But from scene to scene... It could literally be like, I want that jacket. I want to eat. I'm hungry. I don't have any money. I need to steal that piece of information so he doesn't know he's not the baby daddy. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, <laughs> it changes all the time. You've got it all planned <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah, like, and you know, like, <laughs> the greatest thing about being human, and if you, if you focus on the motivation, which should be the mechanic that turns you in the first place it's something that you can trust though i think in acting once you know what it is for, you, for your overall you know the overall experience for your own character you have to trust that you know that and work on 
how you infuse that through other scenes wanting other things you know what i mean we don't just all want one thing you know what i mean we all want a multitude of things over you know thousands of days months and years we hope but it changes all the time and i think that um all too many times uh people who study especially not down in anyone absolutely love like all the big ones rada art said <laughs> love it um but sometimes you pay i find to learn these things that are almost not common sensual but something that you kind of just learn through life i'm allowed to change my mind i agree I, with that no I, I do agree with that yeah i am human and oh, you know God. yeah it's like you know like this is the seed and you must stick to it but i'm like but she wants a glass of water I like <laughs> you learn I mean? so like, much from just <laughs> living that's the main thing isn't it yeah, about like, living and sort of because that's what acting is it's just about being and i feel like yeah. if you're being taught to be yeah, it's not do you know what i mean it's, it's, it's so it's, it's weird it's a weird thing to be taught i mean because well, i don't know I, I learn more from from just experiencing things myself mm. and just going out there and and doing things yeah. instead of being yeah. so I, yeah. I completely concur that like the motivation for anything and anyone is important however just like you know they say love isn't isn't always enough same way motivation isn't do you know what i mean it changes all the time and we need other things do you know what i'm saying so yeah yes, absolutely absolutely i uh, i i concur absolutely concur and uh, olivia what you said there about life life experience as well i think that's so important you know it's, mm. it's it ring it really rings true to me you know because you talk about you know looking at past memories and stuff like none of that is like to teach that doesn't seem you know and yeah. being taught something, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the specific, some specific psychological elements that will always be there. If you love acting and you're an actor and you, you, you got a passion for it, then you can enter a realm that cannot be taught, you know, and that's yeah. what makes you unique. That's what brings personability to your character, you know, that makes it yours, you know, yeah. it makes it special. Um, so Sarah, last, last point on that. Let's say you had a little scene and you didn't have your character's motivation. How much would that bother you? It doesn't bother me at all. So yeah. back to your homework thing about script. I'm, I'm yeah. somebody that doesn't necessarily not do homework, but I'm never concerned about what I don't know, which is why mm -hmm. if I take on a project or I do a project, I'm very kind of like for me the god that is Kate Blanchett I don't touch bad writing so um if the writing's bad I won't touch it because then I have to overcompensate for the fact that it's crap mm -hmm. so <clears throat> when I get a script it's more a case of I'll do my homework but my homework doesn't go beyond the script the writer has given me everything that i need to know so when i don't know the motivations you know some a lot of the times you get um scripts 24 hours learn it turn up casting know what you're doing yeah know who this is mm -hmm. no well i don't i don't bloody know who she is yeah. i know these words <laughs> i know these words and i know her name and i know what the character opposite her says about her and she says about herself and I can only play. And I'd say that's the only thing that I'd say would be missing between, a, you know, sometimes actors and directors find it so strenuous to work with each other, especially when directors are in director's drop. It's really, it's a really hard corner to come out of as an actor. And if you don't get the relationship right, it can intimidate you to the point where it cripples the creativity inside you. So I'd say just bring an element of fun and play. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you don't know who this person is and you don't know what what the whole bigger picture is, give them options. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if he says do it in this way, give the option. Mm. Give an option that nobody would expect because mm -hmm. maybe he didn't know it could have been done in that way. And I think that uh, actors are all too serious. They're all too yeah, bummy and pretentious and all too too serious. And they're like, oh my God, I must. 
I must nail this character. <laughs> and you're like, really? Yeah. Like, is, don't you want to have fun, like, working it out? And I think, you know, like, if you're going to call a play a play and not play, what's the point of doing the play? So I think if I have no background in terms of motivation, you got to work with what you got. And that's why I never stress myself about what star sign my character is or what her birthday is. I don't know any of that. And I, I don't, I, it's not that I don't care. I would love to care, but if it wasn't given to me, then I'm not supposed to, then I won't. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's um, like I said, this process, I work off the stimulation and the stimulus of the person opposite me and what's on the page. Mm -hmm. And I'll give myself no more stress than that. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not, mentally feasible yeah. to do this and carry these people with you all the time if that was the case you'd probably have about 25 different personalities and some of us do not bad <laughs> I'm, I'm very I'm, true I'm happy, yeah. yeah I'm happy to yeah. sit with somebody that looks like split do you know what I mean but at the same time it's like it's a very dangerous psychological warfare that you're dealing with to go and retrieve a character keep them with you know so much about them that you actually forget who you are Mm. so for me it's like know what's necessary take home what is necessary mm. be careful some of these characters are not very nice people and sometimes it takes a long time to get rid of them in terms of yeah. even in anchoring because obviously NLP is something that I know about but more for therapy is mm. even in anchoring you find yourself doing stuff in your normal every day that characters that you had 10 months ago on on the national they're sitting right with you it takes a while so I never concern myself with anything more than what's on the page but I will do my utmost best and homework to okay. decide what, play around and tease what's on the page do you know what I mean no information is useless if it's on the page mm. outside of that your creativity is your own I, I don't let steam come out of my ears but I think yeah, yeah absolutely thank you for that wow okay powerful that was a speech <laughs> that was a speech that was, that, was, really was. That, was that, was that was your oscar speech um, <laughs> wally just keeps dipping in and out i don't know she's like i want to be here i don't want to be here i want to be here <laughs> um, i thought you were crying then real you were just like this <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so hard <laughs> Olivia, you know what's interesting? Because I know you've done a lot of um, comedy as well, haven't you? And it's interesting. I don't... When I was thinking about it, when you told me, I was like, you know what? Not enough people tell me that. You know, I don't know that many actors that really say, oh, I've done a lot of comedy. And, you know, I think the, the almost go-to is like drama, drama, psychological thriller. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you have to, yeah. you know. So when you said it, it kind of stuck with me. And I was like instantly there was something different about you and that kind of stuck with me so like that's kind of like good <laughs> yeah. you know um but I want to talk to you a little bit about that but I also want to talk to you a little bit about um this essence of naturalism that that actors um bring to the table and especially you doing a multitude of genres you've done some um comedy you've done drama and underneath mm -hmm. those is a lot of different genres and whatnot um but I'm wondering to what degree you 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 think about or hold such a high value to this idea of my acting needs to be naturalistic. It has to be relaxed. It has to be believable. Is that something you actively try to reach, or is that, um, or is it sort of like no, you just enter the character and if it's there, it's there. Does it need to be like that? Um, it depends on the um, on the genre actually. Um, cause, uh, the one I did recently, which I, I sent you a clip to, yes. um, that one is, was meant to be very sort of a, a bit more slightly over the top. Um, so the director normally gives you that, that information to, you know, that they'll say at the start, hopefully cross fingers, whether you're supposed to really take it up there or not. Um, so that one I could just go full out and uh, properly just be a mad woman and just, you know, that was so much fun. I, that's what I love about comedy, actually, like very, um, you know, comedy. But I feel like comedy also has to have naturalism in it as yeah. well. Um, it's it's important that, that naturalism sort of comes in everywhere. Otherwise, somebody won't, uh, nobody will believe you. <laughs> and uh, that's what you're you're meant to be doing. You're meant to be making sure that everybody believes you otherwise no one's going to enjoy the story are they because they're going to think well I don't believe that I'm going to switch off now do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah 
yeah. just get the remote, bang. <laughs> <Later>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's just, I, I yeah, it's very, very, I, I mean, I always try to, um, with everything I do, I always try to make sure that um, it's naturalistic, even if it is a comedy where it's, it's meant to be over the top. Um, there, there's always something in there that, you know, uh, and but I feel like uh, it kind of comes naturally um, mm. when I do it now. Um, mm. But I remember at the start when I was more because uh, I did a lot of stage at the start before I went on to film, and because um, stage and film are, they're so very different, mm. and people always talk about how um, uh, like some people say how similar they are, and I'm, they're not similar at all. They're so different. It's like doing a completely different job. Mm. You go from I agree. As, as I said earlier, stage is so it's you know it's all about move your movement and the way you move and in film it's all about your face um so it's it, uh, it's so it was so difficult coming from stage to film um because i was doing so much for my body on that and i remember <laughs> watching the first thing i ever did going oh my god like i was literally moving so much i was like yeah blah blah blah, blah, blah like this on, on camera <laughs> and i was like what am i what am i doing but that's it's a good because you can look back at you know uh, so great doing film because you can keep looking back on things you've done in the past mm -hmm. on camera and go well i'm not doing that again that was awful yeah. and that's a good thing about about <laughs> film because you can keep watching back and sort of improving and uh making sure you get better every time you do it i, cause I, I love doing as many films as possible just so yeah. i can keep practicing and keep re-watching myself and going well i can it sounds so vain keep re-watching myself but i can keep <laughs> like you know um sort of improving from watching my past things and making sure I can do better next time. Um, yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing. That is, <laughs> that's the answer I was looking for. That's great. It's great as well that you've done so many different genres and you've explored it and you've done this, um, stage as well. That is incredible. You know, you're really, oh, really formed, thank you. that's really really formed actress. <laughs> oh, um, bless you. Now, um, so we are coming to a close very quickly. I just want to get one last question for Frankie, Laura, and Sarah, I'm going to ask you all the same question. Um, and then we're going to close off uh, because we're running out of time. Um, so relatively short-ish answers <laughs> um, because I want to have time to close off and um, whatnot. But uh, so Frankie, I want to start with you. Um, mm. When it comes to your own interpretation of a scene and mm. when you're on set and you're in the moment, where do you stand on b your, the ability to have free will in terms of improvisation or your own thought on like, I felt like he, the character needed to say this outside of the director's direction in, you know, in terms of your own feeling towards the character, if it just comes to you naturally or you have free will to improvise, you know, the director gives you, just says, you know what, feel it. You know, do you like to stick to the script or do you like to have some sort of wiggle room to, to, to throw in essences of the characters or nuances of the character that, that you feel might be there? Is that something you actively concern yourself with or? Um, do you know what? It's nothing that I really ever think about. However, if I'm given that opportunity by the director, I will, and I feel it in the moment, that is what I will do. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Like, Because some directors really don't want you going off script or or saying anything, because they, they, they really see that them writing their lines as like very precious. And I can respect that, fine, sometimes it is, and I'll, I'll do that for you. But if you give me that leg room to kind of stretch my legs, I will do it, I'll take it. Because, you know, it's kind of like Sarah was saying, like the, the ability to kind of be malleable and, and see what works and what doesn't, the experimentation. Sometimes, you know, you give them something that you, they didn't even know they were looking for. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> and this is why in film right. we have takes. We can't do this in theatre. In film we have different takes. If this take doesn't work, you do it again, or you do it again, you do it again. That's that's literally how I see it. I don't ever think about it. But if I've had that discussion and I've got that rapport with the director, and I can tell he is that kind of guy, I'm like, I'm not doing it because you might like it. I'm doing it because this is what the character might do. Now, if you don't like it, you let me know, and I'll change accordingly. <laughs> If you do, we keep it in and it works for everyone. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful answer. Beautiful answer. Thank you for that, Frankie. Laura, same question to you. Where do you stand on it? I'm going to be really boring. I'm exactly the same. <laughs> so, uh, if the director is super, super, duper strict on the script, which they can be because, you know, you have some of these writers, bless them, which are so talented and spend hours and hours and hours creating these masterpieces, then fair enough, I will stick to it. Um, but if there is wiggle room, then 
Well, a wiggle. <laughs> little wiggle room. Obviously, we're not a monologue or yeah. anything. <laughs> it just slipped on him. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ten minute piece. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah. Um, Not crying in a comedy. Like. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, what is this girl doing? <laughs> that. Um, oh, no, but if there is a little bit of wiggle room, then yeah, I mean, and obviously as well, if it does apply to the script and it does make sense within the scene and I feel it in the moment, then yeah, I might have a little something mm -hmm. in there, but if it doesn't make sense, and I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, I must think of something to put in there if there's, there's dead Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's get not some something you well. actively, yeah, yeah. It's not something you actively think about, like, oh, I need to think where I can, yeah. Yeah, where I can, like... Mm. Where I can swim to. <laughs> <laughs> my line in. It's my piece, it's my dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Olivia on stage, yeah. like, hey, young. <laughs> see me, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I created a short film not so long ago, and I gave the actors, yeah. like, a wiggle room, because I was yeah. like, this is the script, but you know, I respect you, you guys so much as actors that, you know, if you feel like something needs to be improv in there, do it. Because as you say, you know, you can do more takes, you know, you can, you can tweak it here and there, or, you know, if you go, oh my God, what was that? You can, in the edit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and blend it seamlessly, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was the odd time when I got the other actors to do that, where there was like, and I don't blame them, you know, where they have like scene stealers suddenly popping in and they, you know, yeah. they put in, like a 10 line thing and you're like, where did it come from? Or like, you know, they'll give us spoilers of scenes to come and you're like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I don't play, though. Fair play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Laura. Fantastic. Sarah. I, I test the waters. Mm -hmm. So normally, 100%. There's, in every single script, there's probably one or two lines that I just really can't get in there. So I always kind of like rotate the words around or take a word out. I always test the waters with the, the director and I always say, this word, can I take it out? Yeah. And if they're like, oh, well, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Or they'll just say, no. And I'm like, right, <laughs> you're somebody that I have no wiggle room with. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Gauge it. Yeah. 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 You kind of gauge it, and most of the time, like you said, you know, over auditions and stuff, you kind of get a feeling for how you can talk to, respond to the director, and being like, yeah, like that, like, like, like that, and he's like, no, 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 not like that, like that, and you're like, I like that, and he's like, yeah. So it's like you've got kind of like a up and down. I have been with with directors that I like. I've been with one director that asked me to learn the punctuation as well. Ooh, not wow. just, yeah not just um greatest director i ever worked with but not just the words we, we, have to learn we were like i know i know it like, mm. <laughs> yeah no that's the punctuation face serious guy <laughs> but um it was like literally one of the best characters but he'll make you learn your lines then he'll literally listen to you and tick each word as you say them when he goes wow. for dry rehearsals yeah yeah. And then he asked me in the second week to go back over the lines, learn the punctuation, and then learn your partner's lines. Damn. Yeah. yeah so there are people that, that, <laughs> that actually learn that way. And he's like, no, there's a reason why the, act, the, the writer wrote it this way. There's a reason why the comma is there. Please respect the writing. And I can put completely honor that. But, you know, like, I, I'm not a computer, you know what I'm saying? I try. <laughs> but yeah. The, Robot line. Yeah, they, I, okay. there's a lot of, it depends again on director processes, a lot of creative processes that are different, so mm -hmm. I suppose. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. This, this, this has just been one of my favourite things to do, honestly. This is great, honestly. Thank you guys so much. I really, really, really appreciate you guys coming on. Molly, I know you're listening to this too. Thank you so much for coming on. Guys, you guys have been <laughs> epic. This has been so much fun and I wish you guys all the very best in your careers, honestly. You're all extremely talented. And I know you've already got it in the bag. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's almost emotional. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me. Oh, no. <laughs> so we are going to end on this, okay? So one day, this is a question for all of you. 
one day you open your eyes, okay? And you're on a desert island, okay? You're on a desert island. And you're walking along, all right? And I'll tell you where you're walking. You're walking down that awkward wet patch where the water hits. You know, that the soggy sand, right? You're walking along there and you're plodding along. You know, you like Castaway, you know, Tom Hanks with all the clothes is all messy. And you're like, you don't know how you got here, but you're just there <laughs> for the purposes of the story. Um, and you're walking along, you're walking along. And then you hit your foot on something and you go, ah! You know, it's the pinky toe. It's always the pinky toe. Oh. And yeah, it's bad. And you think, what did I hit my foot on? And then you pick it up. And it's a lamp, okay? From, like, like from Aladdin, it's a lamp, okay? Mm -hmm. And what do you do with the lamp? You rub the lamp. Spray in the water. Right? <laughs> you spray <in> the water. <laughs> what is this? What's going on? This? Right. <laughs> um, all right, so you rub the lamp, okay? And poof, a genie appears out of the lamp, guys. Can you believe it? And his name is Simon Watford, because that's just the conclusion that I've come to. And <laughs> Simon Watford, what a name, right? That's the genie's name. And the genie, <laughs> the genie says to you, he says to you, Olivia, it's been a long 10,000 years in that lamp, okay? It has been long. Laura, I'm struggling here. Um, so he's in a very bad mood, Frankie and Sarah. Okay, he's not, and you're all by yourself, you're not together, you're individual here. Okay, running out of time, 10 minutes left. Let me wrap this up. <laughs> you know, I'm doing the 10 minute monologue we were talking about. Yeah, <laughs> there's always one. <laughs> uh, there's always one. Um, okay, so where was I? So, and he says to you, Olivia, it's been a long 10,000 years in that lamp. So, and he's in a very bad mood, all right? Simon Watford, he's in a bad mood. He's been locked up a long time. So he says to you, I'm going to do something rather bad. He's going to take your voice away, okay? He's going to steal your voice from you. He's going to go, zoop, zoop, crush it. You can never, ever, ever speak again, all right? That's what he does. Well, not yet. That's what he's going to do. That's what he says he's going to do. However, since you've let him out of the lamp, before he does that, he's going to allow you to, to have one final wish okay and that one final wish is going to be he's going to allow you to say one last sentence and that sentence is going to be echoed across the entire world the entire planet is going to hear what you're about to say it's going to be translated into every language in every country all over the world but that has to be the last sentence you ever say before he takes your voice away from you so my question to you guys sarah laura olivia thank you <laughs> What do you say in that moment to the entire world? Well, Frankie, I'm coming to you first. <laughs> Frankie, oh. I'm coming to you first. Uh, I'm being honest with you. If I'm being logical, mine would be no one came to get me. Like, no one. <laughs> Like, no one. Translated in every language you want. You were sending off fireworks me. and everything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no one. That's it. <laughs> Imagine that you're, just, you're, you're in Germany somewhere and you hear no one came to get me. Like, no one. Like, Sorry, I have, I have no wisdom for you. I have no codes. It's just, oh, All right. that's awesome. Thank you very much, Frankie. I love it. No one came to get me. That's very powerful in itself. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. Olivia, yeah. what are you saying to the entire world? Oh, um. Uh, well, I'd say the line to <laughs> find the lamp and get the genie out of my voice back or something. <laughs> <laughs> I do with you, Mark. Everyone gives like the deepest answers, and you guys are like, no one came to get me. I want my voice back. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> 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 okay, so you want your voice back. You want to get out of there. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Laura, what you got? Save the day for me, please. Oh, my <laughs> God. I literally have nothing. Um... I'll probably just tell them where I am and tell them to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. 
save me. That's it. And then I say this dude has oh, my voice. Okay. Very similar. Very similar. Very, very similar. similar. Now, if I wanted to be soppy, I'd be like, I'd be like, Mom, I love you. And then that would be oh, good. Oh, I love that. Oh. I love that. That's the deepest we've gone so far. That's the deepest we've gone so far. I like that. <laughs> Mom, why don't you come get me? Mom, yeah. you can hear yeah. me. Come get me. Uh, Mom. Mom, get my voice back. <laughs> <laughs> all right amazing sarah what's good what so the depth like is on my back yeah i've got to give the deeper okay. meaning all on um, me. <laughs> i'd probably say something like preparation prevents piss poor performance oh okay yeah. prepare yourself i like people. that if you prepared yourself you wouldn't five be on the desert island preparation prevents piss piece. poor performance yeah, there you go that's alliteration and this is a I piss know. poor performance because yeah. my voice is gone and a genie's jacked it simon <laughs> watts <laughs> simon watts <laughs> someone in dubai is going to hear it <laughs> someone in dubai is going to hear that like, preparation prevents it like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to enjoy my <laughs> breakfast. Like, <laughs> where did that come from? We were to go to sleep and fuck. Like, yeah, <laughs> you wake up like, honey, I'm really sure I'm green. <laughs> about piss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's as deep as you you're gonna get. Okay, so, I like yeah. that. I like that. I like that. Very, very, very deep quotes from these people, guys. Thank you so much. We've come to the end now. That is it. Sarah, Laura, Olivia, Frankie, Molly, thank you guys so much. I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. I wish you the best in your careers. You're all very talented, and I hope to see you um, doing absolute wonders um, and continuous success for all of you guys, okay? You thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Take Bye, care. everyone. See you later. See you later.